how's it going? I'm back with a Mr. Nightmare video for you guys today. This was a suggestion, but I was basically going to do this video anyway. I did skip it, I know that, to do a different <coughs> Mr. Nightmare video that came out after this one. Because this one I don't really understand, <clears throat> but it was a suggestion specifically now, so I mean, I guess it's a good one. Horrifying things encountered using Randonautica. 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 Horrifying things encountered using that. Now, what is that, you might ask? I don't know. So let's find out. I looked it up before, but I don't remember what it says. <clears throat> it's an app launched back in 2020 in February, founded by blah, 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 blah. It randomly generates coordinates that enable the user to explore the local area and report on their findings. Report on their area. Or explore their area. Okay. I really don't, I still don't understand what this means. I really don't, but I guess we'll find out as the video goes on. It is shorter than most Mr. Hammer videos. It's 14 minutes, 39 seconds. We're going to start. So yeah, I don't know what to expect, but I'm gonna give it a like and yeah, let's, let's go. Randonautica is an app that uses a random number generator. No, yeah, thank, thanks Mr. Nightmare. I didn't know that. Didn't know that you would uh, explain. Otherwise I'm gonna have to look it up. Anyways, okay, well, I guess Mr. Hammer is explaining it for me, so that's good. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. Randonautica is an app that uses... Randonautica, got it. This is a random number generator and location settings to create coordinates for users to explore in their local areas. The app was released in February 2020 and became especially popular during the COVID lockdowns. People would often document their findings through video and post them online. Sometimes... Why is this the first time hearing of this? People find downright creepy things or places, or even find themselves at the scene of a crime. A viewer named David sent me this first story and footage. It was August of 2020. The weather had been good, and so he and a friend decided to use Randonautica out of boredom. They generated four anomalies in total, since the first three were in someone's backyard or inaccessible locations. In the app, anomalies are points that can be either attractors or voids. Attractors are clusters of random points that are very dense, while voids are clusters with a very low density. I still don't understand this app, but it's fine. The fourth anomaly looked promising, and so the two friends drove there. You can see on the screen the street they drove down, followed by the small path they went down after parking. The anomaly had a radius of 470 meters, so it was a fairly big area, but they didn't have to look around for long before making a bizarre and honestly creepy discovery. This is a photograph of the path they walked down, and as they walked down, they stumbled across a note stuck through a stick. On the outside of it, it read, write down your cell phone number. When folded open, it read, I can give you a cell phone number or even an email address. Give me your mail address and I will send you it, with what it is referring to remaining unclear. So you can see, first of all, it says, uh, write down your cell phone number. When you fold it open, uh, so that's not clear, sir. Thank you. Ich kann dir eine Handynummer geben oder sogar eine E-Mail-Adresse. Gib mir eine Mail-Adresse und ich sehe. Ich sende es dir. Ich sende es dir. So it says somewhere along the lines, I can give you a cell phone number or even an email address. Uh, give me an email address and I'll send it to you. So yeah, that was just hanging on this tree here, on this uh, branch. This piece of paper. I'm gonna put it back. He ended up writing his number on the note and putting it back on the stick. Right next to the note were a bunch of bras lined up on a fallen tree branch with no explanation. So, yeah, that's a bunch of bras. In total, one, two, three, four, behind there, five. I only, I only see a four. Wait, one, two, Three, four, five, maybe? Six? There, there are more. Uh, These items couldn't have been left there for more than a few days, as they were discovered on the 6th of August, and the last rainfall was three days earlier, yet the piece of paper showed no signs of ever having gotten wet. Among some of the other things that the friends found at the scene were two packages of condoms and a pot that was seemingly used for a fire. Uh -oh. The friends returned the next day on the 7th, and the note where he wrote down his number was gone. A few days later, he got a text from an unknown number, just saying, hi. He answered, saying, hi, who is this? The number then replied his address, and at this point, he blocked the number. 
whatever or whoever this little scene was meant for remains a mystery. Oh, fuck that, bro. No, thank you. Mm -mm. This following footage, posted online by Taylor Vasquez, documents her disturbing findings when also using Rantanautica. She downloaded the app and generated a location not far from her house. The location turns out to be an abandoned creek-looking area. So I keep seeing that randonaut thing all over TikTok, and I really want to try it out. So I just downloaded the app, and I found a location that's like a mile and a half by my house. So I'm going to go check it out and see if I can see Nothing seems out of the ordinary at first, and it seems like a typical random location the app could lead somebody to. Until she finds a series of disturbing drawings, seemingly done by a child. Pretty creepy. I'm going to see what that is. Okay, so I just opened up one of the photos, and it's whatever the fuck that is. Then we have these random three. This one's like, it's your birthday with the snowman. And these two I just put together. And the first one was like a kid hanging up, like someone that was hung up, like hung themselves or something. So that was kind of like a death thing. Play with me. Alright, I think it was just my imagination. I think I'm just hearing shit. As she's analyzing the drawings, she suddenly hears an unsettling sound. Play with me. <gasps> it sounds like the voice of a young child. Oh, oh fuck. The cuts here. <gasps> On a later date, Taylor returns to the creek, but this time there are new drawings that weren't there last time. According to her, these ones being even creepier than the previous series of drawings, with one of the drawings being a sigil of Baphomet. As she is distracted by the drawings, the voice of a child can once again be heard in the background. If they have messages on them, because then, like, those look like symbols. At first she doesn't seem to hear it, but once she does, she makes a dash for it and the video cuts. I really see anything else. Fuck, bro, that's After so creepy. The video to TikTok, a viewer pointed out what appears to be the face of a young child peering from behind a tree. No one was with me, and tell me if you guys think that looks like a ghost child, because I don't f***ing know. Taylor uploads another video analyzing a journal she picked up from the creek, with each page revealing another unsettling message. Taylor returns to the creek one last time and finds not only a Ouija board made out of a piece of cardboard, but also a large knife sitting next to it. This was the last time Taylor dared to return to the creek, and so whatever was going on here will remain a mystery. As with many things posted on the internet, there's no 100% proof that this whole series of videos weren't staged. However, there were certain aspects of the videos that viewers feel make them feel more realistic, mainly the weathered-looking pieces of paper that contain the drawings, along with the disturbing image of the child's face in the video. Whether or not this was genuine is really up to the viewer to decide. Yeah, that's the thing about like horror stories and everything. It's like Mr. Nightmare just narrates them all, but he obviously doesn't know if they're true. Like we're expecting them to be true, but again, anybody can make it up, right? That's why photo evidence and video evidence is always great and always better because then it's like, oh, there's proof right here, bitch. Like I'm not lying, right? right, right? But even, even photos and videos could be edited and just basically staged as well but honestly i i feel like that video was just someone fucking with her that's all all i really think of like yeah yeah you're probably just being fucked with or something like especially after the first time and then, like you know a kid thing but like who the fuck just waits there uh, for someone to come and then discover everything like you know what i mean like who's gonna what little kid is gonna wait there or even an adult playing like a recorder with some like a speaker with like a kid's voice or something like who's just gonna be there until someone shows up and then just play music to scare them away. Like, I feel like that's so rare. Like, anybody, no one has time, time, time in their hands. Uh, they have to stay at the creek and wait, wait for someone to show up to scare them. Like, I don't really think if it's a prank or... I don't know, you guys can be the judge. This story was sent by viewer Davy S. One night as she was scrolling through TikTok, she came across... So I see the yawn a little bit. Across a story about a few teenagers who were using Randonautica, and after following the set of coordinates they were given, reached a secluded beach area where they saw a suitcase washed up that contained something disturbing. But I'll talk more about that in a bit. Davy and her roommate Ash saw this and were determined to make their own unsettling discovery on the app. They invited two other friends to join them, and when they all got together, they gathered in Davy's room and figured out how to use the app. They set a radius around their current location. 29 kilometers, or around 18 to 19 miles. After hitting the button to get the location, 
a screen popped up telling them to set their intentions for what they want to learn and experience during the outing. I'm so Where confused. Where they inputted was spooky. The location the app gave was eerily close to her house. Davy and her friends live in a rural part of Alabama on Lookout Mountain, and at the bottom of the mountain is an abandoned steel plant, among a few other abandoned buildings in a lower-income neighborhood. I really don't understand how a house that works yet. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not getting it. The location it gave the group of friends was three streets away from them. The location was on a very long road that led on for miles and miles without any other intersecting streets. The friends gathered into Davy's car with her friend Misa in the passenger seat and her friends Ash and Beck sitting in the back seat. It didn't take long for the girls to get to the street. And as Davy was about to turn left, she looked at the street sign Owl's Hollow Road. Davy's friends went from loud and excited to instantly quiet as she said, We're here. Davy continued driving down this dark road surrounded by trees and no street lamps. Fuck that. It was pitch black at around 1 a.m. Nope. So the group was definitely feeling the creepiness factor kicking in. As they approached the destination, Davy pulled to the side of the road. At this point, all three of Davy's friends were becoming apprehensive about the whole thing, as they saw a very dark trail that led into the woods. The four friends sat in the car for a few minutes and laughed nervously about whether they should go through with this or not. No, you but they all felt uneasy. The group started to agree that it felt like they were being watched. Despite being in a locked car, they felt vulnerable being alone with just a dying phone and a switchblade. So they all agreed to leave, and they pulled off further down the road. They kept driving, exploring this narrow road, and there was nothing but trees and the occasional street lamp. Davy was getting tired and decided to just do a three-point turn on the very narrow road and go back home. There was a sense of relief, until the group realized they had to pass the trail again. As they passed it, Davy looked in her rearview mirror and saw what seemed to be a hooded male figure standing in front of the trail. Oh, she pressed the gas even harder, but she didn't tell her friends what she saw because she didn't want to scare them. The friends briefly talked about that night before going to sleep around 2 a.m. The next morning, Beck went home and Davy took Ash to work. Misa decided to hang out with Davy for a little longer before she had... That is a big-ass house. That's a nice-ass house, too. Damn, bro. And Davy took Ash to work. Misa decided to hang out with Davy for a little longer before she had to be home in a few hours. They discussed going back to the trail since it was daylight and they felt a bit more comfortable. They made their way back to the trail and got out of the car, this time with keys and phone in one hand and pocket knife in the other. As they walked up the trail, they realized it led uphill, something they didn't notice the night before because it was so dark. They started to feel like something was off, like they were being watched again. They made it to the top of the trail, which led to a clearing. Almost like a dump site, as she described it. There were tires, fast food garbage, household items, etc. The two started looking around some more and came across a bunch of mattresses scattered throughout the clearing. The disturbing part was the mattresses were made beds. Pillows, blankets, sheets, all that you'd expect on a made bed. The sight was so unsettling that the two friends agreed to leave. They hurried back downhill towards the car, and about halfway, Misa stopped in front of Davy and pointed into the woods and said, What is that? As she spotted a red cooler in a small ditch, something they hadn't seen on the way uphill. They stepped down into the ditch to examine it, and as they walked over to it, all the two friends could smell was the stench of something rotting. Upon looking around the surrounding area, she spotted a dead cat carcass lying a few meters away. Avoiding getting too close to the dead carcass, she grabbed a big stick and tilted the cooler upright, which had a bit of weight to it, making it difficult. Something could be heard sloshing around inside of it, like it was full of ice. She shoved the stick into the top of it and opened it slightly, and when it opened, a gust of hot, moist, putrid air hit Davy in the face. Bugs and maggots immediately started coming out of the cooler, along with a horrid smell of decaying, overpowering the smell of the cat. Upon opening it a little more, what she saw was a wad of wet, matted black hair. Davy Fuck. ran back to Misa and yelled to get in the car. The two sped down the road as Misa frantically asked Davy what was in the cooler, but she couldn't open her mouth in fear of puking. After driving a little ways up the road, hoping to find a driveway to assist in turning around, Davy eventually gave up and did another really tight three-point turn on the narrow road. But the two would have to pass the trail one more time. As they did, Davy noticed some pieces of wood in the road that had not been there before. She looked around and saw the same hooded male figure from the night before, standing in the woods. She drove her car over the pieces of wood, damaging the bottom of her front bumper, and then sped off back home. 
She and her friend returned to the trail one more time since this incident to record the trail, which was the footage you've been seeing. Davy has deleted the Randonautica app and not used it since. And you went at nighttime? Stupid. Earlier I had mentioned that there was a video that inspired Davy and her friends to try the app themselves. That video was filmed by a couple TikTok users who each posted their own angles of the video. Guys, we found it. It's okay, Heather. You guys, I'll hold you, sorry. <laughs> 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 Wait, open it. <laughs> Okay, so she's calling the police so we can see if it's actually a dead body or it's just food. <laughs> that led them to a rocky break wall below a jetty at the shore of Alki Beach in West Seattle when they found a mysterious black suitcase washed up on a bunch of rocks under the bridge. As they approached the suitcase, they realized there was a foul odor emitting from the suitcase, and the contents of the suitcase may be more disturbing than they had initially thought. The teens called the police, but with Seattle police response times being notoriously slow, the police took three to four hours to show up. By that time, the tide had risen enough to where the suitcase had washed away. It took a scuba team to retrieve the suitcase and its contents. The contents were indeed quite disturbing. The remains of a couple, Jessica Lewis, who was 35, and Austin Wenner, who was 27, were found inside of the black garbage bag inside the suitcase. Their murderer was their landlord, Michael Dudley, who the pair had previously argued with regarding their rent payments. It was reported by neighbors that on the night of the pair's murder, a male voice could be heard screaming, please don't do this, just let me leave, before gunshots were fired. And this was reportedly 10 days before the suitcase was found. The videos had eventually been taken down by the teens. With so many people using an app that's designed to send you to randomly generated places, it's inevitable that sometimes people are going to run into some horrific things that they were not supposed to find. So if you do use the app or anything like it, it's best to just stay alert to your surroundings. Okay, this is what this makes me remind. Uh, this reminds me of the channel I watched. This channel called Law Crime and Network, or Law Network and Crime, whatever. And basically, it's like a channel that just basically tells you true life crimes and you know horrid crimes. Um, and I've watched numerous ones of them. I keep getting night and nightmares, and that's why I can't sleep well. So I don't know why the fuck I keep watching them. But I do. So, anyways, basically that's what happens. So, basically, I watched this uh, video about this stepmom murdering her stepson, who was like 11, who shot him in the face, sorry, in the jaw, face, stabbed him 17 times, and then he obviously died of his injuries. And she drove 1,400 miles away, put his body in a suitcase underneath a bridge. And what was here? A suitcase underneath a bridge. Or at least seemed to kind of like be underneath the bridge. Which, that's honestly right what I thought of. And I was like, oh fuck, this better not be the freaking kid, bro. Like, I just can't. But the fact that it was literally like someone's remains, that's honestly fucking horrible. Like, just to think that you were like literally so close to someone's remains is just like insane. Just seeing a suitcase, like, you know, with, you know, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Because they were just joking around it. It's like finding a purse. Oh, maybe there's money in here. Like, like jokingly. And then you find something totally sinister and... I don't know, diabolical and just whatever word to describe it. I don't know. But just to find all that, it's just like, what the fuck, bro? That's, that's honestly horrifying. That is disgusting. <sighs> once there was a, once I saw the garbage bag in there and then I, and then they mentioned the smell, I was like, oh my God, I just can't. It's, it's a dead body. And again, this is like a real thing. It's not just like someone saying, oh yeah, I found it. The, you know, it's like a real proof video and it's like, fuck, bro. That is horrifying. That is really disgusting. 
Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. Please be sure to comment down below and do all that good stuff. And yeah, this video was good. I didn't know what to expect, but it was, it was a good video, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Horrifying, but that's why I'm probably not going to use the app. Didn't know what it was until literally until I saw this fucking title. I was like, what the fuck is Randonautica? Like, what is that? Anyways, but yeah, like if you go to a, like, like a random location, then you're probably going to dis discover something. Like, you're going to a random location, like you're going to discover something. It's literally sending you to like any spot, which you could literally find any, any, anything. In, in my city alone, or in Toronto, I could guarantee I'd find something if I use the app. So, don't, don't want to find it. If I, if, if I find a dead body, I'm going to puke. And when they said a dead cat, I was like, I was actually fucking depressed at that. I was like, you fucking bitches, you killed a cat. Like, fuck. Like, I, I have two cats. I can't imagine fucking killing a cat, like, bro, or, or anything for that matter. Except bugs and ants. I, I ate those some and flies. Um, oh yeah, comments. What the fuck am I doing? I, I already stopped the recording, but I'm going to do com com comments anyways. These are absolutely the people you yell at in frustration horror movies because they continuously do dumb shit. The first story, that's what he gets for putting his number on a sketchy note in the woods. Now the person knows his address, such a dumb move. Oh look, a mysterious note. Might as well pull my personal information on it. What, what could possibly go wrong? The power they found in the suitcase with the body inside is terrifying. This app seems to lead people to some really dark places. Let me get this straight. Guy in the first video finds a random note in the woods asking for a phone number with five pairs of bras nearby and he actually gives his own cell phone number. These people die the fastest in horror movies. I saw a hooded man when, when we were leaving. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell my friends. R returns two more times after. It's amazing how an app like this can lead to such mysterious and unsettling, and unsettling experiences. I'd be too scared to ever try it myself. Three to four hours for a place to shop for a, to a possible, possible corpse. Discovery is fucking di diabolical. How is that even possible? How is there not even one single B cop or detective who can be there sooner than that? It's Seattle. You'd be surprised if you found out all the crazy this and that about Seattle that's been going on for several years. I don't know anything about Seattle. Uh, I'm in Canada, so pff, I don't hear any news about Seattle ever, so I don't know what's going on over there. With all with all we knew, we know about serial killers and wrong turn horror stories and road trip stories, why would anyone use Ron Randotica? It's certainly the perfect setup for not living anymore. My issue with that story are the drawings. None of them looked weathered or wet, just smudged and placed. Or I'm referring to the story number two, I believe. The second one has been debunked years ago. This girl's voice is either some stock horror voice playlist or something like that. Okay, cool. I don't know. The girl's voice definitely sounds like a recording to me with the possible, yeah, the volume and sound quality. Not saying the uploader faked it. Just seems like someone else wanting, waiting to fight, uh, waiting around to fuck with people, just like I said. One more comment, and I'll be done. My friend and I used Randonica once. She concentrated on one word in her mind, like it's said to do, and it gave us a location on these railroad tracks. She was like, I'm actually really nervous about this. We only found some empty rail cars when we got there, but she said the word but she said the word was homeless, which fit the location really well. I would have freaked out if it actually worked. Hmm. I still don't understand the app, so pfft. if you guys want to explain to me, or maybe I'm just not knowing what the fuck I'm doing, but yeah, to me that doesn't really make any sense. I thought you just like you, like you make your own coordinates and then it's like what? I don't understand, but it's fine. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like, comment down below. Be sure to subscribe for more videos. Be sure to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys next video. Deuces. Peace.